The mural turned out even better than I could imagine. That's kind of how usually it turns out with murals. Or actually anything that I make. I have it in my head, and then when I actually see it, it turns out being better than I could have imagined it. Some little details I, I fix or I change, but that's the same how it goes with paintings. I start off with an idea, I draw it out, and then when I actually get to painting, I maybe add something, take something away. Like in the original idea, we had a black outline for the net, and I did like a blue shade for the net. I ended up liking that, so I just kept it. Other than that, just little, little changes, little changes in color, but nothing really changed that much from my original idea. Alex and I had a lot of challenges to overcome in this mural, it seemed. We had to deal with, um, well, an incident that happened in the family. Um, so we only had around two to three hours to work during the day because we were only allowed in the building when there was staff working there because of COVID. So that was from nine to seven. So usually we were only allowed to work um, until seven. Some days we had to leave earlier. So just scheduling time, that was something I, I, I didn't schedule into my plans. So on the last two days, we really had to, to push to get it done. And we worked long hours the last day. I think it was over 10 hours. Were there any surprises working on the mural? I guess just being around people again, that was nice. It's like coming to work where I work, I don't, it's just me. And being able to work with my brother, that was pretty fun. No, and you always learn something on murals. So from this mural, I learned a lot. I took this mural kind of like how I prep my canvases that I do for painting kits. So that was very interesting to see. So the black lines that I do, I've kind of created, that's something that came through an experimental class in Emily Carr. It was a class I, I kind of invented on my own. I needed the credits. And one of the first paintings from that class is actually hanging in Alex's house right now. It's the salmon color one. And that was kind of just taking different First Nations cultures from around Canada and kind of blending it into one at first. So at first the black lines um, were all uniform, like one solid thickness. And I think I kind of made it my own by making them more Gitsan. And uh, by Gitsan I mean it's like thinner on one end and then it gets thicker mainly towards the top. And I think that adds a lot to my paintings because um, it makes the colors pop and I'm really well, like I'm known for my colors that I do, bright colors, nature. But also the black lines that I do also helps me prepare art kits for communities. People can just paint my designs and at the end I, I go over and do the black lines and it just really makes it pop. I think what I want people to feel when they see the mural is just happy. Um, that's why I pick bright colors, um, blues and greens, more calming. Yeah, I know when I see it, I, I already get excited seeing it. So also in my, in my murals, I like to hide things in there. Like in the sky, you have an eagle. So maybe somebody will walk by and not see it the first time. And then if they take some time to look at it, then different things will pop out at them. Um, that's something I enjoy in a lot of my paintings. Some things I make obvious, but some things I kind of hide. And in this one, I used a lot of form line, um, which I don't usually do as much, but um, it was because they wanted the specific clans. So that's um, fireweed and killer whale are kind of one. And then the eagle in the sky, the wolf clan and the frog clan. I knew I could make it as a full-time artist when my first show sold out. So my first show was maybe three years after I graduated Emily Carr. I spent a few years working at home, different jobs. And then I applied for a show in Smithers 
I think I had around 12 to 15 paintings, just a small show, set it up and I went back to check on it the day before the opening and there are red dots everywhere and I was like, what's with all these red dots? And it sold out before the show even opened. Well, a couple paintings show, sold during opening night, but that's when I knew I could make it as a full-time artist. People liked my style, they liked my art, and then, what was the other question? I think, how can I make a living as a full-time artist? So I took an entrepreneur course um, in Prince Rupert, and that started getting me to think about how to produce art that you can sell, that you don't have to physically make, because that's very draining. It takes a lot of work, so very recently, I wanted to build a house in a studio, so I've been making coloring books, calendars, designing jewelry, and getting them made somewhere else. Um, these are all things I can sell on my Etsy, stickers, cards, prints, and that's helped me um, become a full-time artist and create steady income. This mural probably ranks near the top, I'd say. Well, it's probably the quickest mural I've done. I think the craziest, craziest mural, and I think Alex would agree, is the arena mural that we did. We still don't know how we did that in the amount of time that we did it and that we actually finished it. My first outdoor mural down in downtown Vancouver probably is pretty special to me just because it's my first one outside. This is probably my favorite one inside. Crazy story. So my boss, when I first graduated university, was Tammy Baskins. Um, I was part of Futures worker, and uh, she was working at the band office. And that was my first ever mural that I made was when I was working with the youth. And she is now working for Gits and Health. And uh, so she got to see from when I made my first mural to now, so it's been a, a, a big change and I've learned a lot since my first mural, that's for sure. I always have favorite parts in every mural that I make. And for this one, for some reason, it's the top of the wolf. I just love those colors together, the wolf head but I also love the killer whale head and all those colors together. It's kind of hard to say. I like the butterfly. The butterfly is going to be a lot of people's favorite, I think. And the sky, how the eagle is kind of hiding in the clouds in the sky, not too noticeable. A lot of favorites, I guess, that pop out. So what I'll probably take from this mural um, experience is to be prepared plan out. If I wasn't as planned out as I was, I think we couldn't have completed it in the amount of time that we did. Um, I was very detailed in which colors go where on my iPad. The iPad was a big um, help um, to me and we didn't just wing things so we had a plan. That was the first time I had such a detailed plan um, so that's something I'll take forward for sure. So the advice I usually give to young artists is not to be, because um, when I was growing up, I was always real negative on myself. And I always said I wasn't creative. I always copied like Archie Comics or Marvin the Martian and kind of made it my own. So I'm fine with young artists who are coming up if they want to maybe draw one of my designs. That's okay if they have my permission, but make it your own. And that's something that just takes time. Don't be discouraged if you think you can't come up with your own ideas. It'll come if you just keep making art. So just keep going. Don't be so hard on yourself. And you get as much out of it as you put in. So me as an artist, I wouldn't be making as much or doing as much if I didn't work as hard. So I'm only as, as successful as I am with how hard I work.